long way from uh, Cornwall, Ontario. Oh, I certainly am a long way from Cornwall, Ontario, and this is my personally my first time at Oshkosh, and uh, it's absolutely mind blowing. It's very impressive. How did you become involved with the bush caddy? Then uh, uh, last time I was down here, I interviewed uh, Marlene and her and. Your husband, uh, Marlene and Sean. Sean yep. Yes. Yep. Well, I, I was actually a customer of Marlene and Sean, and I purchased a, one of their kits uh, in Australia. And to cut that's a long. That's where the voice comes from. Right? That's that's where the voice comes from. And to cut a long story short, uh, I was uh, so impressed that uh, I finished up buying the the company and moving myself and my uh, my trusty dog to to Canada. So you're you're building everything now in Cornwall. Yes, we're building everything in in Cornwall, Ontario. We find it's a, a very, very central location. It's convenient to the people of, of Quebec, uh, to Ontario, and also to, into the USA. Yeah, because you got a border point right there. Exactly, Across. exactly, very convenient. Now, what is your plan for this aircraft then moving forward? Our plan for this aircraft moving forward is to, to refine the aircraft even more. And uh, we're, we're very excited at the moment because part of that process is is obviously sourcing uh, new and innovative power plants and we've come across uh, this MW Fly engine and we're now the uh, Canadian distributor for that engine out of Cornwall, Ontario. Let's move in here a little and just have a little bull peep at this. Now, I take it this is a four-stroke, of course. That's correct. This is a, a four-stroke boxer design engine and it's designed from the ground up for aircraft use. Uh, now it has uh, dual fuel pumps, dual ECU, twin spark, it's fuel injected, and overhead cam. So it's it's very, very advanced. It's probably the most advanced thing I've seen in a number of years. And uh, they do a, a 95 up to 150 horsepower uh, engine and all at the same weight. So that's it's quite impressive. Now, it looks like they're still using, or they are using a gear reduction on it? They're using a, a two to one uh, gear reduction uh, on the engine. Uh, they also have an integrated decompression system that below 2,500 RPM reduces the comp compression ratio to around half. So that means upon startup and shutdown, we don't get any of that shudder and, and banging. Uh, and that's of course much, much kinder to the airframe. Now, what about the all-out weight of the power plant? The, say, say compare it to a Rotax 91200 horse, which is used in the industry. Yes, now the, this uh, engine installed is around the 210 pound mark. So it's a little, little heavier in the, than the Rotax, however, the, uh, the 115 horsepower is also a little more powerful. Once you get up to the 130 and 150 horsepower variants, of course the power to weight ratio becomes much, much better because the engine itself doesn't weigh any more. Now, is this, has this engine been out for a while now or is it just being introduced at the show? Or? This engine has been uh, in uh, Europe in development for approximately eight years. It's been in production for two years. Now, there are 75 engines sold, and there's 45 engines in use in Europe. Uh, its debut in North America was at Sun and Fun, and uh, it's the first time here at Oshkosh for the engine. And this Bush Caddy R80 is actually the first aircraft in North America to have a uh, an MW Fly engine fitted to it. And what kind of hours have actually been flown on the engine, or has it been run on a test set? The uh, the engine has got 4,000 hours on a test bed. And is also running uh, in the in one of the owners and designers uh, aircraft for 800 hours, and as a result of that, they have uh, a TBO on the 115 of, of 2,000 hours, and they do expect though that uh, they will, they'll be able to increase that TBO as time goes on. Now, when you look at a TBO on this on this engine, is it going to have to come back to the factory to have done, or are you going to have uh, dealerships or? Uh, we, we're going to have uh, dealerships. I'm, I'm a distributor for the engine in uh, in Canada, and at the moment I'm making arrangements uh, with a, with another uh, uh, partner who we work with in uh, in Ottawa to uh, carry out the maintenance on these engines to become the the maintenance centre for those engines. So we not only supply the engines, we can provide full support, tech support, and also TBO rebuilds and parts, etc. We step back now and we're looking at the uh, the Bush Caddy. Now, which model of the Bush Caddy is this? This is a Bush Caddy R80, and uh, as you can see, uh, it, it's, it still looks very similar to the uh, the early R80. However, there's a lot more refinement that's uh, that's gone into this aircraft. A lot more pre-drilling. Uh, we're, we're using some more modern uh, priming materials. The aircraft uh, is very very robust uh, and very very much suited to the the conditions in Canada. Suited to floats suited to uh, rough short strips, short field takeoff, 
It's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, aircraft. Now, how is the airplane available to the public? Uh, is it available, for example, as an amateur built or an experimental kit, and then is it available light sport uh, in the U.S. as well? Yeah, this uh, aircraft is available as a light sport in the U.S., uh, an advanced ultralight in Canada, uh, as well as a uh, home built uh, in, in both countries, uh, as well as Australia. Now, obviously, uh, as an LSA and advanced ultralight, they're limited to the uh, category weights, but as a home built, this aircraft is uh, capable of up to 1,500 pound gross weight. So it has a very, very, very good, uh, useful load. And what type of construction is used throughout the airplane? Throughout the airplane, uh, predominantly we have uh, uh, in the cabin a, uh, a 1 8 inch by inch extrusion uh, with solid rivets uh, and, and gussets holding the, the cabin frame together, providing a very, very safe uh, passenger cell. Uh, in the, the balance of the aircraft, we use an Avdel rivet and uh, that rivet of course is uh, spaced at a, a, a nominal uh, 32 millimeter spacing or, or tighter and uh, stringers and longerons throughout the, the airframe making it very very rigid uh, and extremely uh, um, strong as far as float operations go which of course uh, puts a lot of stress through the airframe. Now this airplane is also available in both a tail dragger and a tricycle here. That's correct. Uh, it, it's available uh, in a tail dragger and a tricycle. Uh, most of the uh, the aircraft uh, are on uh, in tail dragger configuration. However, we we also have the ability to turn our tail dragger into a tricycle or the reverse uh, in about an hour and a half, which is uh, fairly unique to this aircraft. It, they actually just reverse the landing gear that's on there and then put a caster. Uh, uh, a nose wheel. That's correct. Uh, the engine mount uh, on those particular models has a receptacle for an, uh, a nose leg. And yes, we just reverse the main gear, put the nose wheel in, take the tail wheel off, a few minor adjustments, and you've got a trike gear. Now, how many of these airplanes are flying now uh, in the world? There's around 179 uh, Bush Caddies out there, uh, predominantly the, the R80 model. Uh, they're in Canada, Alaska, the U USA, Australia, New Zealand. I've even sent one to Russia, uh, so they're, they're getting out there now. We should be quite proud of our, our export. And some of them made some fairly extensive journeys and in some very inhospitable uh, uh, areas. Absolutely. Uh, some of the photographs that, that people send me of uh, the places they've, they've got these uh, these bush caddies is, uh, is very impressive. And uh, also uh, some of the unusual uh, cargo uh, meat and, and so forth that they're carrying around from hunting trips and fishing trips. Yeah, I had to go up and do uh, some service work on the Magneto and Rotex engine on one of these, and uh, they had it just chock full of fish in the back. They had a half a moose on one of the floats. It was just unbelievable. Oh what yeah, they were doing. yeah, absolutely unbelievable. I, I just close my eyes sometimes. They, they've got these things uh, filled up to the to the gross weight without a doubt. And, but you have a various gross weights for this airplane. I mean, I think the R80 is the uh, bottom uh, level for the light sport, but you actually go uh, right up into the experimental uh, category, what, 2,800 pounds or something? Uh, uh, absolutely. The R80 uh, as a home built is 1,500 pounds. The R120 is up to 1,700 pounds. We do the L160, which is a gross weight of 2,200 pounds. The L162, which is 2,650 pound gross weight with a useful load of over 1,300 pounds. And of course the four seat L164, which is 2,500 pound gross weight. You've got a fairly impressive little airplane here, but how is it available in the US? Are you dealing through a dealer network or are you dealing directly with the factory now? What are you? At this point in time, uh, people are dealing direct with the factory, direct with myself. We are talking to a number of people at the moment in relation to uh, establishing a dealer network throughout the US. Uh, I'm not too sure how long that will take. However, in the meantime, we, we have no problem uh, bringing the aircraft into the US, uh, either as fully built or as kits, and we certainly have no problem uh, getting them uh, into Australia. I've actually sent a fully built Bush Caddy R80 in a 40-foot shipping container to Australia uh, in the first year I was in operation uh, myself when I took over the business. So if they want to get a hold of you, have you got a web address, that type of thing, they can get you out? I certainly do. That's bushcaddy.com, and uh, Tony at bushcaddy.com is my email address. And certainly go to the website and, and follow the links. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.